Hi, Amberly Lago here, and I'm so grateful and so honored to get to be a part of John Gordon's Positive Summit. I have watched this summit in the past, and to get this opportunity to be with y'all today is just truly a dream come true. So thank you, John Gordon, for bringing us all together. I want to share how true grit and optimism and Building the right relationships develops your resilience and helps you cultivate the life that you have always imagined, even when things don't go as planned. Because I don't know about you, but things definitely have not always gone as planned for me. And I know it's hard when you're going through a challenge or you're even dealing with an authentic catastrophe to imagine that there's anything good that can come out of it. And, and the truth is, we don't always get our big dreams and all of our goals, but we do get our destiny. In fact, 12 years ago, I was going through the hardest challenge of my life, the darkest time of my life. I was fighting for my life. I was coming home from work on my motorcycle when I was hit by an SUV. I was thrown 30 feet and I was sliding across the asphalt. When I finally came to a stop, I looked down at my leg and it was just crumbled into pieces. And my femoral artery was severed. There was blood everywhere. And luckily I was taken to the hospital right away. I was put in induced coma. And the first thing that I learned when I woke up out of a coma was I had a 1% chance of saving my leg from amputation. And I don't know who bets on 1% chances, but I did. And it took 34 surgeries months in the hospital, thousands of hours of excruciating physical therapy, a whole lot of grit. And by the grace of God, they saved my leg. And I really thought the worst was over. And I was actually really excited to be about four and a half months later, be upright on crutches and going in for a checkup. And the doctor takes one look at me and examines me. And he says, you've got something very serious you've got complex regional pain syndrome. Your life is never going to be the same. Um, you're going to be permanently disabled. So you need to go home, get back in your wheelchair and stay there. You're never going to walk again and you're never going to work again. Well, I feel like I, I was kicked in the gut. Like I had been given a life sentence and I look, I pray, I hope that you never get hit by a car. I really hope you never find yourself waking up from a coma, but I am sure every single one of you has felt like you've been hit by something, especially in the last couple of years, whether it's your health, your finances, your relationships. And I just remember going back home and laying in my hospital bed and thinking to myself, how am I going to get through this? What am I going to do? How am I going to get through the pain? How am I going to walk again? And I started spiraling into a depression. I mean, we had $2.9 million worth of medical expenses. We had a lien on our house and I kept saying, what am I going to do? And then I heard this little voice coming from upstairs. It was my two-year-old daughter. And all she said was mama. And in that moment, I realized I was asking myself the wrong questions. See, I was asking how and what, and that gets you in your head. But when you ask yourself why, it activates your heart. It activates the human spirit. And the human spirit is powerful beyond measure. And in that moment, I thought I knew exactly why I was going to get through it and why I was going to walk again, because I wanted to be an example of resilience for my daughters, not a victim of my circumstances. And so you have the choice to be the victor of your life. You have the choice. And once you take your you realize you have a choice, you take your power back. And so I realized the one thing that has had the most impact, the most meaningful impact in my whole journey, in my health, in my finances, in my business, in my relationships is resilience. And now resilience doesn't mean, I don't think it means to bounce back. I think it's the courage to move forward and choose to have a life with joy, even when things don't go as planned. Resilience means being able to get through roadblocks and thrive in a challenge. And so I want to share with you what I've learned and what I have developed over the last 12 years that still to this day I use that helps me turn pain to purpose, that has helped me turn shame to grace, that will help you get through any challenge, whether it's depression, anxiety, anything that might be going on with your business. And it stands, it's PACER, it stands for perspective, 
acceptance, community, endurance, and rest. And resilience comes from deep within you and the support around you. And how Pacer came about was actually my husband told me to pace myself. And quite honestly, I was offended. That's kind of a touchy subject when you're an entrepreneur, because to me, that meant slow down. And I had a PhD in suck it up. And I've had to shift having a PhD and suck it up to taking things in stride. And so I laid out what PACER means to me. The first part of PACER perspective is easy. You have, it's so simple. You have the ability to change your life with a simple shift in your perspective. And the easiest way to do that is with gratitude. And it's something I practice every day from the moment I wake up, because still to this day, when I get up and take my first step, I'm in pain and I can easily talk to myself and say, oh, I'm never going to get through this. Today is going to be hard. But when I say I am so grateful to be able to walk, it shifts my perspective quickly. Another way to shift your perspective is to say you get to do something instead of I have to do something. And gratitude is alchemy. It turns what you don't have into what you do have and what you can do, can't do into what you can do. And it really turned my denial into acceptance. And that's the next part of PACER. Now, acceptance was hard for me. I did not want to accept the fact that I was going to live with this nerve disease. I didn't want to accept my new normal. But when you take radical acceptance and get really honest with yourself, take a good hard look at where you are and who you are on this journey of life, it is freedom. Acceptance means being able to take action steps with grit. And I love grit, but I had a lot of misconceptions about grit. You see, grit without connection is just res resistance. It feels like you're clawing your way to the top, like you're fighting, like you're going through quicksand. It's, it's hitting roadblocks. It's hitting rock bottom. But grit with connection and with community, well, that's where resilience is. That's where the magic is. And that's the next part of PACER is community and connection. And look, I tried to do it alone and it didn't work. I find that alone, yes, we're strong, but when we have community, it is powerful. And when I was in acceptance for where I was and who I was, I started to be vulnerable and be able to share things with my community, which led to deeper connections. Your vulnerability is actually your strength. It's your superpower. It is what connects you even more. So instead of using your strength to try to suck it up. How about using your strengths to try to be of service in others' success? And that's where the real fulfillment is. Because you know what? It takes endurance. That's the next part of PACER. Endurance is where your passion and your persistence comes into play. And it's where you remember why you started through, so you can get through the challenges. And instead of being in fight or flight, when you hit a challenge, how about being in flow, which stands for frequency, love, optimism, and wonder. So how can you raise your frequency, move your body, practice gratitude, go outside in nature, get thankful, forgiveness, listen to music, dance, how can you do things with love? I think love is the greatest business strategy of all times. When you love what you do, and when you love on others, you're going to succeed. How can you approach things with optimism? Well, practice affirmations, turns can'ts into cans with gratitude again, and wonder, how can you approach challenges with wonder? What is the best thing that could happen instead of, oh, what's the worst that could happen? And then finally, the last part of PACER is rest. Now, this was probably still is the hardest thing for me to do. But if you really want to be resilient, rest is a must. And, and sometimes we have to plan out strategically times in our schedule to rest and recover. So when you can shift your perspective, accept where you are and who you are on your journey, connect with a community of like-minded people, endurance, remember why you started just go one more day, one step at a time, one thing at a time to get things done and rest. 
plan times to refuel your body, you're going to be more resilient. And I don't want you to just be inspired by a story or motivated. I've created something especially for the Positive Summit. So if you text it, because you know what I heard John say one time, when you've got grit, there is no quit. So if you just text the word grit, G-R-I-T, to 818-214-7378, I've created a free downloadable playbook. It's going to map out the PACER methodology for you so you can implement this into everything you do, whether it's in your relationships or your business or your life, anytime you have a challenge that may come up. And I want you to remember the most important thing that I can tell you today is you don't have to do it alone. Reach out for help. See how you can be of service to others. Connect with your community. Reach out to me. That's me texting you back. So really text me at 818-214-7378. I'd love to connect with you. And remember, resilience comes from deep within you and the support around you. Change is possible and hope is available. And so I want you to use the PACER method to get through any of these challenges And thank you for letting me share what helps me get through every single day and every single challenge. Okay, thank you.